One more time. Welcome to Papa's Greenhouse. All right, this is my secondary system, the greenhouse. What you're looking at right there is the fish tank. Holds about 50 to 100 bluegill or so. Then down here, we have a raft bed. And the raft bed is a smaller raft bed, but we use it for cloning and for starting small plants. Down below is our sump tank. And if you look right down there, there's the issue we've had with brown water lately. But really what I want to talk to you as I walk over this way slowly is my double dutch bucket system. Wow, look at those tomatoes. Those are huge. That's it. Those are double dutch buckets stacked on top of each other, draining into a common drain pipe back into the sump. Those happen to be Roma tomatoes and they're just starting to set fruit. What my discussion today is going to be on how to build these double dutch bucket systems and how to water them. Good morning and welcome to my workbench. As I said, today we're going to be making double dutch buckets for aquaponics system. Today I want to kind of go over with you first off what materials we have and what we're going to need. First you need a couple buckets. Now on the left there I have a couple of white buckets. I actually got those free from a bakery They had icing in them. So I actually get my buckets free. You could go with a homer bucket like that and still save yourself a lot of money. Those run $2.97 a piece and we still, even if we had to buy two of them, we'd still be way under what it would cost for a Beto bucket. If you buy a Beto bucket, that's a commercially made Dutch bucket, they run about $16 to $20 each at the store. Okay, so we're going to need two buckets. We'll need a couple pieces of pipe, PVC pipe, that's half inch pipe. We'll be using a drill. Now, we will be using a bit, and we'll have some different choices of bits here. You've got a standard twist bit, you've got a paddle bit. Now, if you use a paddle bit, Make sure, let me come up here and get it focused. Make sure you get ones with the shoulders on it. See the tips on the shoulders? That way it cuts a nice clean hole. We'll be cutting a three quarter inch hole. You could use a hole saw like this or a step bit like this. And this is actually what I'll be using today. It's called a step bit, where you cut multiple sizes of holes. You're going to need a Sharpie. You'll need a speed square, possibly, measuring tape some way to cut the pipe. Now you can cut it with a saw like this. My personal choice, once I bought a pair of these cutters, these PVC cutters for around $20 at, at Home Depot or Lowe's, either one sells them. Man, there's just no better way to cut PVC pipe than this. We'll be using two PVC elbows. These run about 21 to 28 cents a piece. I buy them in a bag like this at 10. So it's $2.17 or $2.10 for the bag, as where if you buy them individually, they're $0.28. Cents. We're going to be using one of these grommets. Now I want to show you this bag very carefully. If you take a look at this bag, and we'll see if we get the label on there. And you see the model number is 3MPL8. Alright, now let me just tell you. If you were to buy one of these grommets, it's a special grommet, you can see it goes in a hole, okay? If you buy one of these grommets in the hardware store, they run you about a dollar a piece. I buy this bag of 50 from Granger's. Now, this bag of 50 from Granger's costs me $8.01, plus tax, of course, $8.01. So I saved quite a bit. Even if you had to pay for shipping, if you were doing just a few buckets, you'd save yourself a whole lot of money buying these. Now, Granger is locally for me. So I'm able to go right to Granger and buy this. And I actually get a little cheaper than $8.01 because I get a discount because I'm a school teacher. All right. The last thing you might need, okay, this is a five gallon paint strainer. There's two of them in here. They cost about $1.89 each. I actually buy mine offline. I bought because I have I use so many. Um, I buy them uh, lots of 24 and I think I pay right around $20 for them. These run about $1.89 a piece. I think it's $3.78 for this bag of two. Now here's some things I stole from my kitchen. Please don't tell my wife. I stole her peeler, potato peeler, a little bowl, and some oil, and I'll show you why here in a minute. So these are our supplies we're going to be using today, and I'm going to show you. Now, I'm going to come back to the buckets. You might say, gosh, where do you get such nice buckets from? Well, let me just tell you. Let me flip it around here, and there you go. I get mine from Sam's Club or Walmart, okay? Um, they throw these away. 
most of your bakeries throw these icing buckets away. These are a little over four gallons. The nice thing I like about them is they're rectangular. And when you see the, saw the picture in my uh, greenhouse, you're able to see how nice they fit side by side by side. Okay, so I'm going to stop this here and we're going to get busy. I'm going to take this homer bucket down. We're going to get busy. Okay, I've got my two buckets here. And just for your information, these, these labels here, they peel right off real easy. And I'll peel them off here in a second when I shut the camera off. Now, the difference between a single Dutch bucket and a double Dutch bucket is really simply this. In a single Dutch bucket, your plant and your media grow right in here. Okay, your plant and your media in here. And your drain is right down here. The problem with it is sometimes is your root system from your plants can get really extensive inside these Dutch buckets. And so it will plug up that root system pretty easily. So if you go to a double Dutch bucket, we put a bucket inside of a bucket, okay? Now our plant media and our plant predominantly stay in the top here, and I'll show you a trick with that paint bag to even make it more so, okay? Stay in the top here while the water sits here in the bottom. Now, I want you to see, if you can see right down here at this line, you can see where that other bucket is right there, if you look real carefully. So I'm gonna shut my camera off here. I'm going to pause it and draw a little line. All right, back in. Now you see I got a couple lines drawn here. That first top one, that first top one is where the inside bucket meets the outside bucket. So that's how much space there is in the bottom of the buckets. That mark right there is two inches up from the bottom and centered side to side. These are about seven and a half inches wide so basically three and three-fourths inches from either side is a centering point. Now it doesn't have to be exactly perfect, but I always put mine at two inches. All right, now the key is right here on this outside bucket, I'm gonna drill a three-quarter inch hole. A three-quarter inch hole, okay, with my step bit. Now my step bit, the nice thing about this one here is the biggest size is three-quarter inch. Now this is a step bit, I got a pair of them from Harbor Freight for I think it was six or seven dollars. They work wonderful on very soft materials like plastics and aluminum. I uh, really love it. Um, but I'll be pushing it all the way through right there and be making a hole. Let me pause again and get that done. All right, I've got my hole made. Now, as I said, I steal some things from my wife sometimes. This is a potato peeler. If you have any slag on the inside or outside of here, this works really nice to clean off any extra leftover plastic. The nice thing with the step bit is you don't have much. All right, so the next thing I need to do is I need to take this grommet and I need to insert it into the hole. So let me pause here and get that done. And I'll be right back with you. Okay, I've got my grommet in the hole. I made sure and checked it, make sure that the, both the sides of the grommet are overlapping the plastic on the outside and that it's got a nice that I've, I've pushed it all the way against the walls here. It's got a nice opening, okay? Now, the next part is getting the pipe in. Well, it is kind of a difficult thing to do. If you look at the pipe, the pipe is nice straight edges. Nice straight edges. Now, some people will bevel the edges to go in easy. Let me show you a trick I learned. If you come over here, now don't tell my wife I'm stealing this. I'm gonna take just a little bit, a little bit of oil and I'll pour a little in this bowl so I don't get it all over everything else, okay? And all I do is I take and I dip the tip of my pipe in there, get it oiled, and then when you come up here, it'll slide in nice and easy. All right, let me shut off camera and do that real quick. Okay, as you can see, the oil gets a little residue on the pipe and stuff from the grommet, but make sure you use a vegetable oil, olive oil, anything that's an edible oil, uh, don't use any motor oil. That's that's going to be harmful for your fish or your plants. But the vegetable oil won't hurt a thing. Can you see in here? We'll look inside the bucket. There it is. A little messy. I'm going to wipe her off now. Just got to clean it up and clean it up out here. Now your exterior, your outside bucket is predominantly done. I'm going to use two elbows. One will go on the outside here, and one will go on the inside. Let me go ahead and do that. All right, so I got my elbows on. Now, this elbow here, from here down, is where it would go into your drain line. This could be shortened. This could be lengthened. It really doesn't matter. 
I cut about a 10 inch piece. I try to put it, kind of center it, in the middle of the bucket here. Now you notice there is an elbow down here. This elbow is also pointing down, so the water has to come from the bottom here. It's going to come up into that elbow until it reaches the height of this pipe and then come out here. So I'm only always keeping about an inch and three-fourths, inch and a half worth of water in the bottom of this external bucket. Okay. Now, we have to figure out how we're going to get the water in here. Okay. There's a couple different ways, and that's a, that's a topic for a whole other video. All right, but we've got to put, be able to get our, our plant bucket ready. So I'm going to pause this and get my plant bucket set up so I can show you. Okay, this is the bottom of my top bucket right here. You notice the, the bottom is, is complete. There's no holes in it. I'm going to put some holes, one hole in each corner, and about three or four holes around the center here so we have a way of the water draining through this bucket into this bucket and out the pipe here. Okay, now, the only thing I would cost you about drilling your holes is to make sure you understand what medium you're going to be putting inside. For my purposes, I use gravel or rock, okay? And so I want to make sure my holes, my rock is bigger than the hole so it doesn't come out. Now, I use what's called a three-quarter inch. Um, it's, it's a shale that's been baked about 2200 degrees which makes it ph neutral so uh it works really well it's actually called rocks r-o-c-k-s it's made by sun leaves um it's a hydroponics company um i, I like to use that uh, you can also use a perlite you can use a vermiculite but this all right this bucket now is ready to go into the top of this bucket all right so we are to the point where we can put our medium in here I can hook my watering system up to this. Again, watering system is a whole different subject, okay? My medium, my grow medium, the different kinds of things to use, whole different subject. But I'm going to show you one extra step I do. Now, you don't need to do this, okay? You don't need to do this. But what it does is help contain the roots in the top bucket. Sometimes you have an issue with roots going through the top bucket and into the pipe on the bottom bucket and causing a plugging, okay? Which is easy to clean. I mean, it's not, you just take the top one out, get the roots out of it. Pluck the roots off the bottom here, put it back in, and away you go again. Okay, it's really not a hard thing to, to for maintenance on these. But let me show you what I got. All right, this is a five-gallon paint strainer. And you see it's just a, a, a nylon mesh bag that's going to go inside of this bucket to help keep everything in. So let me pause and do that real quick. All right, this bucket's ready to go. I could put a lid on it. There's some different kinds of ways to run your lids. You can take a lid and cut a hole in it, make it look real nice. Um, you have to remember that one thing about anything to do with hydroponics and aquaponics is algae is your enemy. Algae takes oxygen out of your water source. So you try to do everything you can. That's another positive thing about the double dutch buckets is because you have a double layer of bucket, light does not penetrate into your grow media and create algae. Not nearly as much as a single bucket does. All right, hold on one second. All right, here's my lids that I use, okay? This is a bucket that I got free with it. I cut this line through here so I'm able to split this, get plants in or out if I need to. Got a couple lines here. If I was doing hydroponics, I could run my black water lines in, the quarter-inch black water lines. But aquaponics doesn't play nice with those black small quarter-inch lines because there's too much debris. So I actually use PVC pipe to come into the hole here. But my plants will grow right out of the center here. That way I keep the interaction between sunlight and water to a minimum. And that way it keeps my algae way down. Protecting that algae growth is what you're trying to do. Let me back up. You can see I peeled the labels off. We're all ready to go. Let me just tell you my cost factor here. Cost factor. Okay. I've got, starting right here, two elbows. 28 cents a piece if I bought them individually at Lowe's or Home Depot, okay, 56 cents. A piece of pipe, 17 cents. That grommet right there, 16 cents for the grommet because I bought them in a quantity from Granger's, okay. My buckets were free. The bag, $1.89 at Lowe's. You get two of them for $3.78, I think, something like that. Uh, but it runs up, breaks down to $1.89 each, okay. Total, grand total right here, this whole setup is $2.78. Now, you don't even have to use these bags. 
So that's a dollar eighty nine. I wouldn't even have to have. It depends on the media. If you're, if you're using perlite or vermiculite, definitely you've got to use the bags. But if you're using just a rock or gravel, don't really need the bags. But it's nice to have anyway. Um, helps keep your roots contained in this upper bucket. All right. Um, so realistically, we're talking at the max two dollars and seventy eight cents for this whole thing. And remember, from the beginning, I said a Beto bucket, which is a commercially made double Dutch bucket or single Dutch bucket. Anywhere from $16 to $20 a piece in the store. You can save yourself a whole lot of money by getting these buckets for free. Check out all of your grocery store, uh, bakeries, Walmart bakeries, uh, Sam's Club bakeries, Costco bakeries. Any gr any bakery will have buckets of, from their icing that they just end up throwing away. Restaurants and pickle buckets. You can get buckets free just about anywhere. Just make sure they're good and clean, Okay. Uh, other than that, thanks for watching. This is how we make a double dutch bucket. We'll talk to you later. Thanks.